looked like a very cute kind of mystery like find it game but it very much became a lesson about doing things for yourself and because you love them <laughs> Welcome back once again to a new solo gameplay. Now I'm going to be completely honest, do you see the restart here? Well, I literally just finished recording episode 1, but for some reason my recording software decided to switch my microphone to a microphone I don't even have. It's never done that to me before, I don't know what happened, but I have already seen episode 1 and know what to do because of that, unless I make different choices than I did the first time. Let's get into episode 1. The Silence. Malik translation. I'm wondering if this is set in Europe because some of the names sound very European to me. Do you have enough socks? You need plenty of socks. It's very cold there. Mama, you packed the suitcase yourself. It's stuffed with socks. All aboard! All aboard for Vienna! You will write to your mother, won't you? Every day, Papa, I promise. You're such a liar, but I love you anyway. All aboard! Last call for Vienna. Mama, let the boy go. He will be in trouble if he's late. My dear boy, take care, take care. Wait, we play as a girl, so why do we start out following a boy? I didn't realize that the first time we played, or what well, I played. Yes, Mama and Papa, you take care too. Take care. Wilma first left on this very train station, now me. Oh, that's her little brother. That makes more sense now. You guys have no idea what I'm talking about. You'll see. Vienna, I'm gonna butcher names, I apologize, I am an English speaker, I'll try my best. Muskokademian? Probably did not pronounce that right, myself. Arthur, where are you? You asked me to come to your office, here I am, waiting. Maybe at least you want to talk about us? Oh yeah, I heard there's a student-teacher relationship, it's really weird, and not only is he her professor, but he's like the head of the school. I don't know how to begin. Oh, don't be silly, Wilma. I keep hoping it will happen, but it never will. I'm glad you're here. I had to see you. Sorry I'm late. Why did you wanna see me, Professor? Please, call me Arthur. Uh, no? <laughs> Why did you wanna see me? Well, to be quite honest, yes? Wilma, your performance at the salon was quite incredible. The guests could not believe their ears. Oh, yeah, they seemed to enjoy the music. I'm so glad. I want to hear more from you, Wilma. You need to keep up the momentum. How is the new composition coming along? It's more difficult than the others. I'm progressing. It's more difficult than the others. I chose I'm progressing last time. Your music is so new. It entices. It challenges. I think... No, I know we are about to achieve something great here. The future of music. Arthur, I'm... You must build on the success of your performance. You know what? Why don't you let her talk and tell you how she feels so you're not under so you're not talking over her. If we stop now, we'll squander this opportunity. Um this is her dream, not yours. We have to keep moving, keep working. We have to establish your name. Yeah, then why are you treating her like a circus performer? Well, I'm that is what is it? I started composing it, but... But? Oh, Arthur, I'm stuck. I think she's going through writer's block. I'm horribly, horribly stuck. I don't know how to complete it. Mama, don't say that. Uh, well, she's just being honest with you. If you can't handle that, I don't know what to tell you. We've come so far. Everything we've, wor we've worked for. I don't see you lifting a finger to do anything. You're just telling her what to do and hoping she'll do it. I can't bear to let you down. Why? I know what's wrong. Oh, do you? The pressure from the Institute. Everyone clamoring for your attention. Recognizing you on the streets. And even more pressure for me. At least you recognize. 
At least you recognize it. You said it yourself, it's momentum. You need a change, that's clear. Listen, I have a cabin in the mountains. You'll be able to work there. I can't accept that. No, you've done too much for- well, I'm not asking him to come with me, I don't think so. Nonsense. You're teaching, guiding me, helping me with a scholarship. You need time alone. The quiet, yes, quiet. I'll take care of things here. Arthur, I can't. I'm not asking. Oh, that's, that's the thing. He's her professor, right? He's her teacher. He's got all this power over her. And he's pressuring her to do this. And it's so sad. It's settled. And like, he says you have a choice. And he's like, oh, wait. No, actually, you don't. It's all arranged. The carriage is on his way to pick you up. And I already have stuff there. So you're going to go either way. Which, again, she could say no. But her being his student and you're bringing your violin aren't you of course i am i played that old violin relaxes me but he has so much power over her as her teacher not only her teacher but her like head of school and it's she's really feels stuck and i know some people in real life go through that and it's they're always like people you can turn to if you like have a trusted friend or your family members you can reach out to them and I'm, they can help you get out of these situations because it seems like such a scary situation to put yourself in and I could not imagine how scary it is trying to get yourself out with something so controlling that has so much sway on your life especially like when it's something as important as a college you have to walk the last part of the way it's quite a hike I'll manage very well I think this is for the best. You will be completely alone, no distractions, which by the way sounds like a start to a horror movie. Let's stick you in the middle of nowhere, in the woods, by yourself, no contact with anyone, no one knows you're there but me. That sounds like the beginning of a horror game. Okay. Somewhere in the Alps. Almost there. Just a little farther. Just a few more steps. Phew. There I am, coming up to the cabin. I finally arrived. That's it, Arthur's cabin. Oh, Arthur, I hope so much that you're right. An inspiration is waiting for me down there. Telephone poles. I didn't know I could... Wait, I can click on this? The only connection from this place to the outside world. I've never been to the mountains before. There's so much to see. So high above the world, Vienna must be somewhere beyond those mountains. The forest up here is so dense, the trees are thick with needles you almost can't see through. Dark clouds hang over the mountains, almost as if they're waiting for something. The wind is growing stronger. It won't be long until the storm is here. I better hurry. Yeah, maybe you should. You don't want to be stuck up there. I didn't even know you could click on the... Can I go? The path that leads from Arthur's to the cabin. Oh, I thought I clicked on her. <laughs> See, there's some stuff I didn't discover yet. Can we go? There we go. I clicked on the cabin already, but I guess I had to click on it twice. Ugh, the Lion Song, episode one, silence. I made it just before the rain. Hopefully it will stop soon. The walk up here was exhausting. Phew! Alright, Velma, it's time to unpack your bag. Bag, right here. I'm starving. There should be a sandwich in here somewhere. Music paper. Ah, there it is. I wonder what kind of sandwich it is. It kind of looks like a tater tot, to be honest. Oh, a letter. Who's in my room? It says, open upon arrival. My dear Wilma, I hope you had a trouble-free journey, and I'm sure you have started writing already. Inspired by the beautiful surroundings, read on. However, I have a confession to make. Perhaps he has written something about us? Before your departure, I started to organize a concert at the Mollusk Tavern in Vienna. I was able to convince a few illustration colleagues to offer their work. Read on. 
I had to call in many favors, but... Mr. Skrullenberg, Mr. Berg, and Mr. Mather have agreed to participate, and would be... It will be a glorious evening, and your companions will be the centerpiece. The grand finale. Velma, imagine it! I understand that this is all very abrupt, you think? Just a little bit? And for that I apologize. But now is your time! The musicians start rehearsal next week. The piece must be ready by then. In anticipation of your return, Arthur. I don't think Arthur really gives a damn about her, and just wants her to be successful because... She's like a music prodigy and he's like, you're gonna do what I want you to do because if you're successful, I get something out of that success. A concert? One week? How is this less pressure? That's exactly what I said both, both times. Like, how is that less pressure? Arthur, how could you? The storm is almost here. How am I supposed to write something if I can't go outside? I'm trapped here. The storm outside. And within me, silence. It has started to rain. How long will the storm go? Hello. I forgot about that. Continue. Answer to phone. <coughs> Hello. Gentem Nadeko. Excuse me? Oh, German. <laughs> yes. To whom do you want to speak? I asked who are you earlier. Anyone. My name is Leos. This is my first telephone apparatus call. <laughs> or just an amazing machine, isn't it? Just wait till you find cell phones. Like, boy, you'll be really amazed. You don't even need cords for those, and you can go anywhere. Yes. Amazing. I wonder if... If what? If you're close by, where are you? I'm not gonna tell you. I'd rather not say. <laughs> Keep this to myself. In a different country? Maybe even on a different continent. I'm on a cloud. <laughs> Hello? There we go. Ha ha ha. I never would have dreamed of this. I was told you could speak long distances, but to actually hear a voice, it's amazing. Boy, you have no idea. Like I said, just wait till cell phones. You can get on the internet, you can write stories, you can read, you can shop, you can, you can do anything with the thing in your pocket. It's crazy. Finally, now I can finally talk to my niece, Nicole. Stomach rumbles. What was that? How did you hear that? <laughs> um, nothing. Nothing. I'm sorry, my dear. But this noise is music to my ears. Well, I didn't hear anything. I hear this noise every day. When the guests come to me with empty bellies. Are you an innkeeper, Leos? I am. The best dumplings in... Bohemia. Wonderful, they're fresh out of the pot. With rich, hearty sauce. <laughs> You're just making it hungrier. When you cut into one and the steam comes out. That sounds delicious. Last time I said you're your own best customer. They are delicious. You have to come by one day so I can cook some for you. I wish I had some here right now. Of course you wish that. Oh. I apologize. It sounds like you're very hungry. It was a pleasure talking to you, madame. Uh, uh, I'm very sorry. Where are my manners? I didn't even ask you your name. My name? <coughs> Will you tell me your name? I'd rather not. I clicked that last time too. I just want to see something. Because later on he calls me by my name and I'm like, I never told you my name. How did you know that? <laughs> I understand. Well, madame, it was a pleasure it was a pleasure undertaking with you. My very first talk on this machine. The pleasure is all mine, Leos. Even though you wouldn't tell me your name. See they make a point of saying I didn't tell you my name. You're torturing me now, madame. <laughs> Say, do you think we could talk again sometime soon? <clears throat> they gave me a number, it's twelve fifty five. Perhaps I will call sometime. I hope so. Uh, goodbye, Leos. Why well, didn't click a different option with the... With... Telling him... Not telling him my name, because I want to see if he'll still tell me my name later in the game. Because that was kind of creepy. It may not be a dumpling, but it tastes delicious. I'm so tired. 
This is just too much for my first day. Yeah, he says, go up to the mountains to have some quiet. And then he's like, oh, by the way, you have a concert to perform to in a week. So I hope that's no pressure. <laughs> like, the hell? You literally sent her to the quiet place in the mountains to get some work done and have some time to think. And then you're like, oh, by the way, you have a concert. You don't have time to think. Like, the dude just seems like an asshole. Outside behind the building, the sun is rising. Beside Velma, someone stirs. This caught me off guard. I was like, is she dreaming? Are we in the past? Like, he's her higher up in the school. Like, he's her school head and her professor. There is so much power imbalance between the two because not only is he her elder, but he's the leader of her school. He can literally ruin her academic and, like, her career if she tries to leave him or something. Like, putting yourself in that situation is a very bad idea and I know the whole allure of he's an older man and he's my teacher and that's oh that sounds so like forbidden fruit like you that could be a very dangerous road to grow down <clears throat> huh um Wilma hey are you awake I am now <laughs> oh it's late how did we get here I was just I have to leave. Uh, something's wrong. I mean, this is what I wanted, but... I... Excuse me, I really have to go. I'm expected at the Institute. See, but it's your institute. But it's your institute. Yes. And you are my student. I should not be together in the... Yeah, exactly, that's what I just said. Is that what we are? Together? Distant church bells time the hour. Six o'clock? I'm already late! What it could be so urgent? I'm trying to click different options than I clicked before. I have to be there. It would be marvelous. Arthur, we should talk. Whoa, let her go. And also, these are alcohol bottles, by the way. I just didn't click on them. <laughs> So, he got drunk with his student, and now they're in bed. So that's a whole nother can of worms that I didn't talk about in the, in the last hour of this recording. Imagine the looks on their faces when your song is played. What are you doing? Imagine where we could be in a year. Stop! You're hurting me! The future of music! No! Ow! Arthur! No! Like, it, it's just, it's so gross. It's so gross. Like, day two. Like, I know it seems alluring in books and movies and shows, but student-teacher relationships are just a big no-no to put yourself in. It was just a dream. Just a dream. Arthur, I was finally with you, but... I want... No, I have to write this composition. Like, how to start... Mm. Come on, Velma, concentrate. You've done this before. Anything can be an inspiration. Arthur writes about a phenomenon called tonal discover diversity. By building certain relationships between the notes, the same note can suddenly sound quite different and then when heard again, which is kind of a cool thought. It seems Arthur is talking to her directly. His writing is so clear and so similar to how he speaks. Well, I'd hope so, because, I mean, He's still the one writing the letters. She imagined him lecturing to his students. He pauses, not once, but many times. He turns to her and smiles. Wilma focuses on... his pleasurable surprise every time it happens, his lovely smile, Blech. his inspirational, unhurried actions. Every one of these options is gross, like every single one of them. Like, just... It, He's your teacher, and your student head. She feels warmed by his smile, as if only she could see it. The sh shimmering chord, and now part of the composition. Whoa! What was that? I can't hear the melodies in this din. There are several noises. I can't. The mighty booming, the blood-curdling sque squealing. 
a restless creaking. Where do they come from? I still have enough paper. The lamp, the wind is shaking the cabin and making it sway. The squeaking noise gets under her skin. It's back again. Always amble, even when it isn't. I can't block, I can block it out, I know I can. The noise fades, blurs, and dissolves, and is gone. For a split second, a melody can be heard, but it vanishes instantly. Damn it! I can't hear the melodies in this din. There are several noises, I can't. The mighty booming, the restless creaking, yeah, we already read that. One of Arthur's old compositions. A pile of letters addressed to Arthur. Should I read them? Why not? He left them in plain sight anyway. Dear Professor Canvin, I would like to congratulate you. I had the honor of listening to a minor concert by your student Velma Derloff in the salon recently. Many in the audience seemed to be bewildered at first. Whom, excuse my expression, you have in tow. Read on. There have been many child prodigy. That brings into question how old she actually is, or how old she was when they met, because in this it seems like she's in college, at the very least, so she isn't a minor? Still doesn't make it okay, he still has a major power imbalance over her, but the whole child prodigy thing is like, oh, that doesn't sound very good of him. So, let's continue. But this was different. <clears throat> As this young composer's music played, I couldn't quite believe my ears. But soon the strength in her music became clear to all. But at the same time, enlightenment as it did mine. Wait on. My heartiest congratulations. You must be very proud. You have transformed this rough diamond into brilliant. <laughs> I'd be eager to hear her next composition. Until then... He's so kind to send his best regards to your young artist. Your friend, Gustav. Admiration. Professor Corbin, I hope you know that my recall the stimulating discussion we had recently in the salon. My name is... Great Lonvrick. And I'm a frequent visitor here. Some mistake me for a critic. I'm not. But I would describe myself rather as an intermediary. I unite creative minds and promote the exchange of ideas. This is a culturally, culturally exhilarating time. Read on. Like many, I'm a great admirer of your early work. I have been following your investives regarding a modern music. And the young student who performed for us today is a most promising talent. I hope we could continue our discussion at your convenience, of course. Yours in anticipation, Grit Nonarvik. A painter. Dear Arthur, I am writing to you to acknowledge that, like me, you are a great admirer of every kind of art. Sadly, I know you missed a recent exhibition at the salon. The artist was a young man named Franz Markert. His paintings are very special. Portraits, but none like you have ever seen. They somehow capture every facet of a person. When I saw them, I immediately thought of you. Luckily, I've managed to acquire one or more of his works, and I'd like you to see them and tell me your opinion. To be honest, they remind me of new music you are pursuing, and they are erotic and in a very special way, male and female both. We would have in I would be very interested to know what you think of him. Your friend RM. Who is RM? There are no sketches here, they must be in Vienna. Also, I'm a painter. I mainly do landscapes. I can't draw faces, and I can definitely not paint faces. They turn into like messy, like crooked blobs. Like maybe I can do an abstract face, but I'm I like landscapes. You can do so many different landscapes. You can do like fantasy landscapes, sci-fi landscapes. Like you can do 
with buildings, without buildings, with people in them, without people in them. Just, there's something so relaxing about making a landscape because it can be whatever you want it to be. When you're trying to make something person-shaped, it gets very hard to do because there's only so many different ways you can draw a human. Like, you can draw them in all different sitting positions, but they're still like a human. You're not exploring anything. You're not... I like landscapes because it seems like you can just let your hand go and create the world that you want to create. can't hear the melodies in this din. There are several noises. I can't. Also, I just noticed. So is he going after the painter and her? Like, is his, is his, is this guy's, is this professor's thing going after prodigies to hopefully turn their talent for a profit? Because that's disgusting. A mighty booming. A restless creaking. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I know. Go outside. In the valley, the storm rages with all the howling wind and pounding rain. How can I concentrate? Perhaps I can block out the noise of the storm. The storm booms ahead. The rain and wind are so loud. I'm glad I don't have to be out there. The mountains loom high above me. Viana must be somewhere beyond the mountains. Home is even farther. Thick forests. I wonder if I didn't get lost. Yeah, no kidding. I am so bad at directions I would have gotten so lost. Like, you have no idea. Inside flowers. Key flowers. Why did he leave them out here on the porch? Maybe to hide a key? Honestly, when I recorded this the first time, when it said key flowers, I already thought, well, there's a key in there, and there's a couple of locked drawers, so maybe that goes for that. And yes, there is a key in there. That's strange. Why does Arthur have flowers here? Go inside. But, so that's nothing new. I predicted there was key in there. It's locked. Oh, um, I think I was supposed to stay outside until the noises went away and I came in too early. So let me... I have to try. I didn't mean to come back in. I have to stay out till the noise is gone. I can't tell from here where the telephone lines go. Thick forest, it's a wonder I didn't get lost. What? Melody popped up for a minute. Uh, forming quietly, droplet mushes downwards, falling at last to the earth, thundering on leaves, grasses, stones, from there to my mighty ears. The sounds blur and fade away. And suddenly, it's quiet. Maybe I can go in now, because it quieted down? I was like, I think I forgot to do something outside. Um, I can't hear the melodies in this din. There's one noise left. I can't. The restless creaking. I don't know what the... I already shut the lamp off. The flame dances quietly to and fro, and flares up briefly before subsiding. Um, drawer is locked, like I said, dusty, but empty, locked. Letters, pile of letters addressed to Arthur, I already read them, I don't need to do it again. Hut supporting beam, what? The wind rattles the cabin, the beam creaks. The feathers in the wood bend and snap. The noise blurs and fades away. Oh, that's what was cre- What? Oh, what? Finally, I can start writing. Ah, oh, or not. Telephone. Uh, what happens if I ignore the call and block it out? You know what? I answered the call last time. I want to see- Not now, Leos. Well, the, that wasn't exactly ignoring the call. Let's see. I feel bad for ignoring the call now, because he was so nice the last time I played. I already... there are already several great passages. What the fuck was that? Was that... Was that here or was that in the game? Did you guys hear a knocking in the game? But still a lot to write. Oh, that, that might have been the call that he called my name to. I'm kind of regretting not answering the phone. 
I have no reason to make a phone call right now, but I want to talk to Leo, so I should have answered the phone. <coughs> I can finally start writing. Let's see. The composition is developing well. There are already several great passages, but still lots of rain. I already read that. My favorite poem is in here. The Panther by Rainer Mara Reich. His gaze against the sweeping of the bars has grown so weary it can hold no more. To him there seems to be a thousand bars, and behind those thousand bars no world. A dark, strong beast trapped in a cage, the sound of a secluded piano, behind it silence. I feel so bad not talking to Leos. And I'm on, I'm honestly wondering if that's when he said her name because I didn't I made a point to not tell him my name, and he called her by her name. Some letters, letters. Someone described my last performance. In Wilma's mind, the words form an image. People hold their breaths, their eyes sparkling with excitement. They move and then they move away and then move closer. She hears their footsteps and the clinking glasses in their hand senses their glances everything comes together a harmony engulfing the melody and giving it strength how can i yes like this she's starting to hear it <clears throat> oh, and then she got her back is gonna be so sore like she keeps falling asleep at that desk that cannot be good for your back and she's alone she doesn't okay I still think that looks like an eye. I thought that last time. It's like, at first I thought it was like an eye staring down at her. Like all the pressure of what she has to deal with is eyes on her. It's cold. And wet. Huh. Where am I? Rain? A well? Why? Why can't I move? I don't think these matter what you choose. I can't move. I'm paralyzed. Water drips down the stones. The rain. The water is rising. My feet... The mud grips them like dead hands, which is creepy. I gotta get out of here. Hello? Is someone down there? Why can't I get out of the... That way. Help! Is anyone down there? Yes, I'm down here. The rain is too loud. I can't hear you. I can't move. Can you climb up? No. My feet are stuck in the mud. How did you get down there? I must have fallen in. I didn't choose that last time, I chose... I don't know. <laughs> don't panic! Huh, it's a difficult problem. The water is rising! Please, do something! The stones are slippery. I don't want to fall in. Wait here, Wilma! I'll try to get help. How do you know her name? Don't go! I chose how do you know my name. It didn't answer. I can't hear you! I'll try to find help. Leos? That would be terrifying. Like, just stuck in a well, like, and have no way to get out. <clears throat> the storm has gotten worse. Like, I think that dream represents the pressure that she's under because she very much is under a lot of pressure. Like, I think because of her teacher, she's under pressure. And then she's listening to the rain in the background, so, like, not only does the rain represent her surroundings with the rain in the background of her trying to write but it also represents the rising pressure she's under to get this done and it's like showing that the pressure that she's under is suffocating her and making it hard for her to complete something she loves to do day three just a dream this is all too much if only i could leave no I must finish this piece. I owe it to everyone. The melody... It's right on the tip of my brain. Velma, concentrate. Huh. 
Another noise. Tick, tick, tick. What is that? Talk. Oh, it's not something else. The noise is coming from in there. I clicked around for so long trying to figure out what it was. I have to find a way to get in there. Could be some kind of hidden key. Maybe I should take a look at the flower pot outside. Wait, you didn't say that last time. Last time I figured it out myself. Whoops. I didn't mean to click on myself. I meant to click on the window. <coughs> Flowers? Why did Arthur... Oh, here's a key. You literally came out here to check the flower pot for the key, and you're like, Oh, why did he have a pot here? Oh, look, a key! <laughs> Last time she did say the thing about the key being in the flower pot. Pocket watch. I've got it! The tick of the old watch shatters in her imagination. The fragments dissolve and gradually fade into silence. <coughs> Arthur must have had a reason to lock this letter away. I'm gonna snoop. My beloved Arthur, I can hardly wait to see you again. The memory of your last visit still hangs in the air, like the note after the orchestra has already finished lingers on. It fills me with dreams and feelings and longings for you. Read on. Sometimes I want to get away from Vienna. I want to travel with you across Europe and farther. So it is Europe. With every year, one senses what was fine in this city. What was worthwhile, grand, and now ebbing away. The voices all sound the same these days, just echoes from better times and longing past. Read on. Velma is losing herself. Pardon? You didn't say that last time either. Is this because I've made slightly different choices? But this city, its people, they don't care. They see to it that things keep on as they are, instead of doing something about it. I don't want to stand by and watch. I hear Barlam is the future, full of beauty and hope. Let's go there sometime. What do you think? Please tell me soon. Yours, great. Another one? Arthur. So, I'm wondering if great is another love letter? Yeah, a love letter from someone called great. So, how many people is he involved with to get his way? Because he seems like a very manipulative person. I mean, he got her drunk in that video and had sex with her because he thinks she's some sort of trial prodigy like he is out for himself and just a horrible horrible person let's see arthur another harmony would be beneficial i still have to find a melody i need another rhythm a change i haven't written a note to him can i I have no reason to make a phone call. I want to call him! I feel bad for not answering his phone call last time. Let me call him! Fine. Be that way. Play a, I'm going to play a melody. I didn't I didn't get this option last time. Of course. I will just play. The music repeats itself. Molov's melodies and rhythms, which Vilma plays many times before. Never really surprising. Almost boring. Continue playing. The tones seem to linger long after. A reminder of other times she's played. Never written harmonies. Maybe there it's time now. Hmm. Ah! <laughs> that was that huh was my reaction. I and then it came up on the screen. We're on the same page there, Velamina. Or Velma. Velma writes the harmonies down. <laughs> Melodies are strange. Only one sheet of paper left. The melody is already part of my composition. The elements of something. It states that... A state that is to be preserved during a transformation can be discovered by applying another transformation. The transformation over the course of the piece of music can prolong an emotion through variation. Variation from fast tempo to slow tempo. Maybe if I... Yes! Oh, does that mean he's not gonna talk to his niece because I didn't talk him into talking to his niece? I feel so bad for not picking up that phone call. 
That's wonderful. I shouldn't have ignored Leo. Oh, I feel so bad. Maybe that's already because I, I, man, I regret not picking up that phone call. Oh, see, I would have had the melody by now if I didn't ignore the phone call. Can I call him? I want to talk to Leo. I ignored my guardian angel. Now I regret it. I'm starting to wonder if that's what Leo is because. When I recorded this just a few minutes ago, uh, I answered the phone call the second time, and he called me by my name. Like, he called the character by her name. And I was like, I made the choice not to tell you my name. How do you know my name? Are you my guardian aid? But, and then he talked about not having the courage to talk to his niece, and I talked to him about talking to his niece and told him that he should go for it and that she probably misses him and now I'm like is he not gonna do that anymore because I didn't tell him to are they having sex okay that was a man last time FM many facets of the same person a melody formed of multiple facets I wonder if the music's gonna change because I didn't answer the phone calls I can barely keep my eyes open. Maybe I should sleep. But I don't have enough time. I I chose stay awake last time. I'm gonna choose go to sleep this time. I'll get up tomorrow to give me more time. Okay, go to bed! You're gonna have such a sore back! Goodness gracious! Leo? Should I answer? I'm gonna answer. Why? I can't do anything. Uh huh? I'm sorry I didn't answer last time. Let me- hello? Let me answer. Here we go. Hello? Leos? Good evening, Velamina. No, not Leos. What do you want? Funny you ask me that. I'm playing both sides. I'm talking to myself. Me. Have you ever thought about what you want? Uh, I want to be successful. I was going to choose something different, but then watching the story, I'm like, no, she seems to genuinely care about the music. It's just the pressure she's under that's keeping her, like, ah, instead of enjoying what she's doing. Like, she feels very much stuck because people are pressing her to do the thing she loves, not because she doesn't love it. I want to be successful. Ah, that's more like it. At least we are talking about what you want. I believe you can be successful. But what are you going to do to achieve that success? I will, I will do what I do best, right? Music. Good. Well, you get the letter back. You better get back to work. You deserve to hear your music. You know, when I first played the game, I thought that was his niece at first. <coughs> but it was me I was talking to day four, the storm. It's here. Oh no, 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 no. All of these noises in my head. I can't let my fears control me. I can block them out. I have to try. But maybe I won't be able to hear the music anymore. Try to black them out. Stop it! The voices become louder. Stop it! One by one, the voices fall silent. Stop it! I can do this! The voices fade, and she has a sudden realization. Her heart beats steadily. She feels the air feeling her lungs. Oxygen in her blood. The warmth in her fingertips. The consistent ephemeral rhythm. Music notes are playing! Do, do, do. Yes! Yes, that's good! My old violin. Despite its battered appearance, it still has a beautiful tone. Rain out the windows, the soft tapping of raindrops against the glass. It has a magical kind of symmetry to it. Yeah, didn't say that last time. The melody feels very near. That's good! I think because I didn't talk to Leos, I had to get the melody in a different way because last time I played, I got the melody from talking to Leos, but I ignored his call, which I'm regretting doing. So, 
Let's see. The composition is developing well. There are already several great passages, but still a lot to write. Oh, I didn't realize I could go on that. The flame flares up from time to time, struggling for air. A flickering, firing rhythm that... for the composition. Yes, that's good! So see... Okay, that doesn't make sense. At first she says the the thing, the fire thing moving distracts her, and the rain is annoying and loud. But now she's all like, oh, that would make a great melody. But there's still something left to write, the finale. There has to be a space for a few notes. No. Where will I get something to write on? Maybe the unfinished composition? Hmm, the back of Arthur's composition is clean. I need the paper. I'm sorry, Arthur. Don't apologize to him! He's a horrible person. Looking at her music lifts her mood. This is my best work so far. The melodies flow through her mind while the rain falls on the cabin. Now a dedication. Oh, I can't even bring him up as an... He was one... Aw, Leos was one of the options before to dedicate the, the, the music to, and now I can't do that. I am sorry, Leos, for without whom my music would not exist. I guess I'll dedicate it to my brother. So this is a lion song. I feel so sad! I should have answered his phone call because it was so sweet. She dedicated his music to... Or she dedicated her music to him because he was genuinely a help for her, which means... I don't know if he talked to his niece because I was the reason he talked to his niece because I told him that she might love to hear from him and then, oh, that poor old lonely man. I feel so bad. I was just trying to do something different than I did in the last recording and now I feel bad. The auditorium is packed. A composition by Solenberg, Mahler, and others have already been played. The mood is tense, expectant. <clears throat> I wonder if the song's gonna be different this time. Seems as if the whole city of Vienna is here. But now is not the time to be nervous. For Lion's Song. The sounds and melodies free themselves from the instrument. Honestly, I love the violin. If I were to ever learn an instrument, it would be the violin. There's something just so... <sighs> it just hits me right in the heart. I don't know why. Expand with wide, distant perspectives. From pictures of familiar faces and places. Well, that was fun to say. Faces and places. But then a burning desire to break free. Cleaved into the facets, cleaned and sharp edge. Some of this stuff is saying is different than before. Persisting yet changing from moment to moment. Now peaceful like a warm voice from far away. And we're in the creep's office. Who I do not like at all. We're in the mountains. She's going back through the journey the song took her on. Which I guess makes sense. His porch. Talking on the phone with Leos. My apologies, Leos. I'm so sorry. Excuse me. And when the notes have been played, it seems like everything fits. Everything is in its proper place. Just so. As the curtain falls, Wilma leaves the stage and disappears behind countless musicians. Finished. This feels very much like a story of doing what you love for yourself and not for others. And to be completely honest, for the past few months, I've been struggling with making YouTube videos because I originally started doing YouTube because it looked like fun and because I loved doing it. Like, I love making YouTube videos. It's fun. I love sharing my opinion on books. I love making the shorts. I love doing gaming videos because I can just relax and chill and give you guys my genuine reactions. But somewhere this year, it became more about what do you guys want to watch? What do I want to bring to you? It became more about making the video than it did me enjoying making the video. And because of that, I started to fight with myself. Like, I want to make a video, but I don't have the energy to, and I don't want to. Like, part of me gave up on working on YouTube because I've been doing YouTube for five years, and it seems like I'm not getting very far. And it became more about getting somewhere than it did about doing this for the love of this. And I'm still trying to get back into 
doing YouTube videos because I love doing them. And out of that, I need to make a video for the people watching. I need to do it because if I don't do it, I won't grow. But the thing is, if I keep doing this because I love it, I'll keep growing because when you do something that you love just because you love it, the right people will find you. But if you do it solely for the people watching or solely for the people involved in whatever hobby you're doing, you are going to lose interest in it because suddenly there's this pressure to do it because you're trying to impress other people. You are not doing it anymore because you love it, which then destroys the very thing you love because there is that pressure. I am very much still trying to get myself out of that rut. And don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong, I am absolutely happy for you guys that do watch me and have been here through this journey. I'm not saying I'm not grateful for that. I'm just saying that I need to get back into doing YouTube because I love doing it. And if spending time watching my videos makes people happy, great! I am so glad and I'm glad to be a part of your day and I'm glad you let me be a part of your day. And I think that this was a perfect time for me to play this game because when I found it on, I believe it's on Epic, it looked like a very cute kind of mystery like find it game, but it very much became a lesson about doing things for yourself and because you love them. And I'm very much in a spot where I needed to hear that right now. I didn't mean for this to get emotional, but thank you guys for watching. I'm so thankful you're here, and I hope that whatever you love doing, you find it. Alright, that's it for episode 1. Hope to see you next time. Bye guys.